Hey guys, Alex here. Welcome to another Office Hours. Today's question, what's the right way to download and install Blender? If you're looking to get started using Blender or you're using Blender already, but just wanna be sure you've got the latest version set up correctly, stick around because we'll cover everything you need to know for this crucial first step. Blender is a powerful open source software used by creative professionals and hobbyists alike to create stunning 2D and 3D images, photorealistic renderings, animations, and more. And best of all, Blender is completely free. To get started, or if you've already got Blender, but you wanna be sure you're on the latest version, all you have to do is visit www.blender.org and click on the big download Blender button. Blender runs on Linux, Mac OS, and Windows operating systems. And the website should detect the system you're currently running and default to downloading the appropriate version. But hold on, before you get too far, you'll need to quickly check that your computer meets the minimum requirements to run Blender. You can find those requirements on the Blender website. Or if you want more advice on how to find the best computer for your particular situation, we have a video that covers just that. I've added a link to that video in the description. All right, once you're sure your computer meets the minimum requirements, all you have to do is click the download button for whatever version matches your operating system. Now, one thing you should know is that new versions of Blender are typically released about every three months. And unfortunately, it won't auto update within the application itself or let you know that a new version is available. So you'll wanna come back every 90 days or so to make sure you're on the most current version with the latest features, bug fixes, and updates. Also, when you download this main version of Blender from the big download button on the website, that's what's referred to as the stable version, meaning it will have all the latest features and tools that have been fully tested for compatibility and bugs across the supported operating systems. All right, you've clicked download Blender. What's next? If you're on a Windows machine, find the Windows installer and run it. Follow the on-screen prompts, and this should be a fairly straightforward install process. But the most common problem people run into is not having the proper administrator privileges, which will cause the installation to fail. If you're having this issue, the easiest thing to do is actually go to the Microsoft Store and install Blender from there. If you're on a Mac, your download will be a DMG file in your Downloads folder, or wherever you specified when you click Download from the website. Double-click on the DMG file to install, then drag the Blender app icon into the Applications folder. Depending on the security and privacy preferences of your Mac, Mac OS may request your approval before opening Blender for the first time. As for Linux-based systems, there's more to unpack there that we won't cover in this video, but you can check out Blender's documentation for detailed instructions. I've added a link to those in the description. And what about updating to the latest version of Blender? Simply follow the same steps we just covered. If you have an older version of Blender already installed on both Windows and Mac, you'll be prompted whether you wanna uninstall or overwrite the existing version. And that's it, now you have Blender installed and you're ready to get started. But quickly, let me mention, there are a couple other versions of Blender you should be aware of. We won't dive too far into these for the purposes of this video, but just know that there are other versions available to download on the website, including the LTS version, as well as beta and alpha versions. LTS stands for long-term support. This is useful for a large studio or organization working on a long lasting project that requires a very stable version of Blender, meaning that new features, API changes, or improvements that are added to the stable Blender release, but could potentially mess up something about how your project works, those won't be integrated into this version. However, any critical bug fixes are ported over. A new LTS version is available every year, and each version of LTS supports two years of this added stability. There are also experimental builds, including beta and sometimes even alpha versions. These versions are not as thoroughly tested as the stable release and might break. In Blender's own words, these builds have the latest features and cool bug fixes, but they can be unstable and mess up your files, so use at your own risk. From my experience, the beta versions are still pretty solid and are a fun way to play with features that will be out in the near future. Alpha versions are a little less stable and things are still changing a lot, so I don't spend as much time with them. All right, you've got the right version of Blender installed. What's next? Blender is the type of program you could try to set out to learn on your own, but if you can't afford to waste time or pick up bad habits, I recommend you at least watch this video, which covers some of the most common frustrating mistakes that trip people up when they're just getting started. If you've got Blender questions you'd like us to answer in a future office hours, let us know in the comments below or send us a message. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, happy blending. Smash that like button. Smash, smash, smash all the buttons. Double smash the subscribe button. <laughs>